said, well, where do I breathe? And he said, well, I didn't write anywhere you could breathe. You just don't. With the sea at our gate, we'll have Kipper Jaring. What a swan to a strike from the Straits of Bering. Every night in a kip when we're... Helena, because she's got so many of the tough songs and she's having to find her character in the recording studio in a way, that's been a challenge because she's never really known, well, where am I going to be? A and B comes. And action. For example, if we take the worst pies in London, how am I going to know that I've got to sing this song, hit a rolling pin on the thing, make a pie? How am I ever going to know that I've got enough time to sing that, walk across the pie shop and talk to Sweeney? That's been the hard one for her because when you record the orchestra, we have to make those decisions without seeing the film. <laughs> so Helena would always be there and she'd be whispering in my ear at the recording studio, mm, can, we try, can we just try one a bit slower? Can we try one a bit faster? Because she was trying to, you know, routine her scene out in her head. Action. We hadn't actually done any acting together, me and Johnny, so I didn't really know. So sometimes you did come across, but you thought, like, oh, I thought you were going to look at me at that. That was what I'd imagined in my booth. Of course, when you're acting on your own in a booth, your other actor is always going to do what you want. And then when they're on set, they got different ideas. It's a little vibe. What is that? Right, you think we are? Sorry, baby. Sorry. Right. I'll do it less, but it's got to yeah. stick. It's been really interesting working with Tim on doing this musical. First of all, it's been, because I know privately, because I live with him, that he hates musicals. So it's kind of fantastic that he's doing one. This is my territory, because you know, he thinks that Billy, our son's going to be gay, because he listens to Judy Garland, and I just bring up, bring, brought him up on musicals. It's very interesting adapting a stage piece to a film because there's lots of things that I didn't know f to begin with that I sort of found out as we went along. For instance, you know, there's a lot of music and it's maybe 70% people singing, but, you know, we tried to avoid that kind of a lot of dialogue and then people bursting into song and, and so to sort of deal with that, you know, we cut out a lot of choruses, we cut out a lot of secondary people singing things and let, you know, the main characters sort of project their feelings through the music. It's really coming from an internal place for them. Although I'm an extrovert, he's asked me to bring everything back, not use my hands, I mean, real practical things. I hardly ever use my hands, which I find quite hard as an East End extrovert to not use my hands. He said, no, no, looks theatrical. Not use my eyebrows, too, <laughs> which tend to be hyperactive anyway. He said, because you're singing and you're already in a big environment, you're singing, there's a full orchestra, you look strange because we've got rather dramatic makeup, you've got to counteract that with a very restrained performance. Once we got to the set, it was a lot nicer than I expected it would be. I mean, the idea of lip syncing, because you, you're lip syncing in a sense, but at the same time you're not, because, I mean, on the set while we're doing it, we're singing it, we're belting it out like idiots, which is the right thing to do. But the pre-record is the guide and is also the safety net in a sense. You don't necessarily have to hit the note properly, you know, each time on set. I felt like we were making kind of an old-fashioned horror movie, silent movie with music, and, and uh, you know, kind of going back to the, the, the kind of performers like Boris Karloff or Peter Lorre or Lon Chaney, people that were very expressive in those old horror movies, but then just set to music. And if you're beautiful, in silent film, you know, when the director was off camera, he could sort of say, you know, turn right, you know, do this, do, you know, and, uh, I mean, Tim has the freedom to do that while there's the pre-record going on. Any sound, you know, the dot, whatever, anything is welcome at that point. Goodbye, Joanna. I can't anticipate. It's always a surprise when I see a film of his. And then I go like, oh my God, that's what he saw. Because he's a private individual, definitely creatively. Mrs. Lovett, you're a bloody wonder and an elite like a He's very musical. 
and you can see it in the rhythm of not just the cutting, but the way the camera glides, the way it moves, the choice of angles. He's responding to the music. This is Tim Burton's giant salute to yeah, classic horror films. It's a beautiful marriage from two completely different worlds. It mixes horror movie and musical. Humor, emotion, light, dark, puts them all in there. That's, that's what'll make it uh, interesting. As long as I don't run it <laughs> in the process. <laughs> It was just a different thing for me. I never tried something like this. For me, it was certainly new territory, and uh, that's what I really enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm.